Hey guys, welcome back to the next episode of Building Reactor Mark III, the Microwave Pyrolysis Reactor. And before I even really get started, I'll let you guys know right away, this video is long overdue. It was supposed to be uploaded pretty much two or three days ago, but I have just been so upset after what happened in this video. And you're going to see it, you know, especially if you just stick through. It was everything was going so well and then it just went horribly wrong thing after thing and and it, it just really sucked. So let's get started. So to start we have the shaft here and you see I put these fittings over the shaft and these fittings and all are gonna kind of represent how I'm gonna seal this shaft. They're gonna be like where the packing and stuff will go. And you see they're gonna go before the bearing because I can't really seal the bearing but I can seal the shaft, you understand? So I, I wanna go, go ahead and make sure that I have enough space between the bearing and these couplings in order to make a seal. But with that being said, I need to build a mount for this bearing to sit on. So I'm gonna build this out of angle iron because I believe that this thing would need a lot of structural stability because it needs to with, you know, be able to withhold the weight of those blades. I might even have to build some other type of braces for this brace itself, you know, for this mount because those auger blades are really heavy and that bearing is gonna be on a lot of pressure and it doesn't need to fail at any point. So you see, I just mark all of these equally the same length, five inches. And then it's time to cut them out on the good old shear. Of course, this can be done by hand, but I would not recommend it because in my experience, every time I cut stuff out by hand, even when I cut it on the line, I'm still off because I'm just not good. So as you see, I got all of them cut out, all four pieces of angle iron, all the same size. You gotta love modern machinery i sure do so now that i got all four of these i want the system i want almost every system in this reactor to be modular i don't like permanent stuff because i'm very indecisive i like to experiment with many different things and change things out so i'm marking holes in these so instead of welding these plates together i'm gonna bolt them together so wherever i can bolt things together in this reactor i'm doing that but of course, when it comes to the actual reactor and sealing it, welding is the best way to do that because if you use bolts, it's kind of hard to seal bolts. So when it comes to mounting things to the reactor, I'm gonna weld those, but everything else, I'm gonna try to bolt. So as you see, got the drill press, and I gotta say, once again, you know, I'm in love with this drill press. Drilling holes by hand in metal for about two years in the past two, or you know, in the past three reactors I've built. Man, it has shown me, it has shown me Diablo, okay? It has shown me the lowest of mankind. But at, anyways, as you see, I got them lined up. They look really good and they work really well just like that, you know? Honestly, it's actually kind of hard to mess stuff up on the drill press. It's ironic I'm saying this, you're gonna see why <laughs> later. But, you know, as you see, I got both pieces done. Now I did drill two holes, not realizing that the nuts and bolts are gonna get in the way of each other. So anyways, I gotta do this bearing mount, right? I gotta get this holes for this. And this is where I was saying the irony comes in because I was just saying that it's kind of hard to mess up with a drill press. But I actually messed up the holes on this bearing mount horribly. I don't really show it in the video, but basically when I went to mark the holes for the bearing mount, I did not mark the very center of the holes. So when I drilled the holes, they were all just a little bit off, every single one of them. So I had to make every single hole a little bit bigger than what it really needs to be for everything to work. And then the middle was an absolute disaster because it was, you know, something like that middle bit for it to just be a little bit off, it changes everything. So I had to make the hole way bigger than it needed to be heavily overcompensate and 
yeah, as you see, it's I was I was suffering because of I was paying the price to put these big drill bits on here just for them to um you know take extra time take extra effort but at least this with the drill press though because to do this by hand it's a puku for your wrists you know every time that drill kicks back a sport oh my goodness man yeah god i love it mcdonald's i'm loving it mate so anyways guys i got all that stuff done and as you see i, I think it actually starting to look pretty good you know um when everything's put together uh, it's like when you bolt things together and all that it's kind of like putting together a set like a little lego set you know it's something really satisfying about like when you you fabricate parts and then they all are coming together you know you, you love to see it so anyways as you see everything goes together and it's all lining up well so i mean i'm like come on now what can go wrong like this is amazing you know little did i know so went ahead I marked where these were just to make sure that I kept them in the same place when I was welding them and then we got to the welding of these pieces of angle iron I, I just needed to tack them first because I don't want to weld directly through this paint primarily for my lungs but you know of course also that does contaminate the weld but I gotta tell you man this paints that they put on these barrels like they are really, really like, they just release tons of fumes and it gives me an instant headache. So as you see, I took a cutting wheel to them just to get down in the crevices and ground it down real good. That went to welding and that pretty much solved that issue there. Because I can't wear my respirator under my welding helmet. You know, can you guys do that? You know, anybody who welds, can you wear your respirator under your welding helmet? Because I can't, like when I do, it like, it like makes it like, it makes the um, little window way higher up and I can't see crap. So anyways, welded those on there and then it was time to weld this, um, this flange plate mount to the angle iron mount. And you see that's what we do. Made sure, I made sure it was level and I also made sure that everything lined up. You know, that's just as important too because if, it's, if it doesn't line up with the holes, I don't think anybody gives a damn about how level it is, right? So, I got those done and now it's time to weld this union and pipe connection to this. And this will serve as the primary way of sealing this because this union will be completely its own independent piece. It's not going to spin with the shaft. So all the pipes I thread into this coupling are going to be stable. They're going to be steel, right? And then within those pipes, I can put grease. I can put some type of, you know, like thin material like packing or something and it's gonna just sit up on that shaft and really form a good seal so that's my idea you know it's kind of hard to see but from this point forward everything just goes downhill you know you would think that everything would line up well but the moment I go to actually put the actual auger blade in here and not just this little shaft I had you see it doesn't line up at all and I figured you know what this is fair it makes sense I was not basing off these things I was not really basing the measurements and I mentioned off this stuff based off the auger blade and obviously that sits in this reactor differently you know I was just assuming everything would line up perfectly but of course it didn't because you know I'm imperfect I didn't cut the auger blades perfectly so that they probably don't sit perfectly 90 degrees so with that being said I had to cut off my welds and I mean, come on, guys. Let me tell you, man. Let me tell. I hate cutting off my welds, cause when I weld, like, I weld as if it's gonna be there forever. I don't, I don't like doing this. I hate cutting off my welds. Like, it, when I have to cut off my welds, it's a sad day. I, I, I don't like it. I, I just don't. I'm, I'll be honest with you. I hate it, guys. So I had to cut off all those welds, and on top of that, this is this really thin sheet metal. So this stuff takes a beating every time you have to cut and re-weld, cut and re-weld, like, 
the, the, the molecular strength of this stuff just gets worse and worse. So at this point, I'm like, dude, I don't know if this barrel can even be reused. Like, we might have to get a whole new barrel to finish this project because I don't even know if this thing can hold up to this, you know, to, to this stress on it. So, you see, I've put this coupling and shaft back on there and made sure it was aligned with how the shaft went. I made sure because I'm like, this is what we need. I even spun it. And as you see, it spun. And it rumbled the whole ground like damn Goliath and Godzilla was having a fight. So then I went ahead and I walked it on there when I confirmed, okay, this works. That's where it needs to be. Then I slid this flange bearing mount flange mounts on here business as usual it lined up as well like okay at this point i'm like okay what can go wrong i made a mistake i learned from my mistake and we're fixing it right we're, we're fixing it so i went ahead i welded tacked it on and guess what it spun this was so exciting when it was spinning on the bearing like oh my goodness i was so excited to see that because i'm like yo we're almost there you know and so I went ahead and I, I had to, you know, do this in all positions, you know what I'm saying? I had to weld in all positions to get this done. There was a huge gap between the end of the line when I, when I had to cut it. So I had to do some, some, you know, some damn advanced street fighter type welding techniques to get this thing on there. And after all of that, all of that was said and done, you guys saw it line up. You guys saw it spin. Guess what? I went to go push the shaft through. And it didn't, it didn't go through. It didn't go through. And you can see the shaft is kind of on an incline. And, and man, I was just like, no. I was just like, this can't be, you know. I, I, I was in disbelief. I, I couldn't believe it, man. I tried everything. And you know what? I did get it to go through at some point. By pushing the mount up. While pushing the shaft down, I actually got it to go through, but guess what? I could not get that thing out. And you guys need to know, this thing has to be removable. The shaft needed to be removable for me to be able to properly seal this. It's non-negotiable, man. So for this to happen again, man, I gotta cut off my welds again? After, after welding a gap the size of the Red Sea where Moses split it, I gotta do this again. These are sad days. These are sad days, brothers. 